Hey, giving away this month's members only art to all my subscribers, whether you're a paying member or not. Uh, this is the second one for this month. The first one went to members only, but this one I want to give away to you guys just for watching the videos and being subscribers. If you do want to become a member, there's a ton more that you can unlock, but I'll leave that to you. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has engaged with the channel at one point or another in their life and really got me to this stage. And I can't wait to share more with you. And of course, watch Kenobi with you. So this one is Vader and Kenobi fighting as you can probably tell. And I have this, you know, every month I have art commissioned for members and this one's done by Kate Comics. And I was like, you know what? Why don't we just do Vader and Kenobi? And she chose to do this kind of a, a shot for it and I love it. I think it looks really good. You know, you got Kenobi in his Kenobi trailer attire and uh, you got Vader a little busted up and uh, I'm really anticipating how these two fights supposedly in the show are going to go. I think they're going to be ridiculous. I think they're going to be absolutely bonkers and cool. And I can't wait to see how they actually end up because we know that they both can't die and we know that obi-wan won't let vader go so i don't know we'll see what happens but anyways thanks for watching the vid yeah enjoy the art you just you can go to the community tab and i'll also put it in the description below so thanks for watching the videos Hey guys, how's it going? So this showed up on Disney Plus yesterday and I'm here to talk about it because a lot of people are actually in a frenzy about it and they're like, okay, so this is actually happening. Obi-Wan's leaving Tatooine. And I just wanted to say that, yeah, in the trailer, he leaves Tatooine. He's uh, going to that Nar Shadda inspired world. If he goes any other place besides that, I don't know. It's possible. Maybe he could go to Mustafar. Maybe he could go uh, to Coruscant. Maybe he could go somewhere, someplace else. I would love it if he went to Coruscant. But we also have to stay... A little bit cognizant of the fact that he's really supposed to be on Tatooine watching over Luke. And this is something that was in the books, it was in the comics. He doesn't leave. So my question is, how do they make this possible in the show? You know, how does he leave for such a long time? Who's watching over Luke at this time? Is it Ahsoka? Is it maybe Rex? Is it somebody else that we haven't met yet? Maybe that Jedi that's supposed to come in and find Kenobi from Order 66. So yes, definitely the synopsis does confirm that he does leave. So did the trailer. Now, if he's just staying on that one planet, I don't know, like I said before, I think it would be interesting if he left. I mean, when all of this was coming out and we were like, oh, he leaves the planet. And I was thinking, well, this retcons a whole bunch of stuff that's not supposed to happen. But then I thought to myself, you know what? It would be much more entertaining for a show and for the journey of Obi-Wan and the adventures of Obi-Wan if he were to actually leave the planet. And if they were to somehow come up with a way that Luke is watched over by somebody competent like imagine yoda comes there and just watches over luke it wouldn't happen but if ahsoka or somebody like that is watching over luke i, I don't have a problem with obi-wan leaving it just really depends on who the babysitter is that obi-wan gets you know it can't be like your local tuscan raider or something to watch over luke it's got to be you know like a jedi or or someone very very able to protect luke from inquisitors from bounty hunters from the empire now the part about kenobi confronting allies turned enemies and face the wrath of the empire well of course that's vader you know allies anakin but it could also mean inquisitors you know these are jedi that have turn to the dark side and while they're not full-blooded sith like you know vader is or palpatine is they definitely have chosen the path of the dark side and these might be friends of obi-wan's you know they might be changing some things in canon that we don't know about yet maybe they're going to make some characters like quinlan Voss to be an inquisitor now i mean who knows really quinlan has fallen to the dark side before so it's not really a big stretch um well there's some reasons for that but i just don't think that the only ally that Kenobi is going to know on the dark side on on the empire in the empire is going to be Anakin I think it's definitely going to be a lot more familiar faces that we've seen before that are now evil and trying to kill him and I think the show is going to be pretty much going through this whole what the hell has happened to everybody you know like Obi-Wan is the only one pretty much besides Yoda and maybe save a few other Jedi that he, we run across who hasn't turned to the dark side and he's gonna be like what the heck is going on with people and maybe he'll question his own faith his he'll have his own doubts and this is something very prominent in the Kenobi novel where he goes over so many different scenarios of things that could have changed the fate of Anakin Skywalker and the fate of the galaxy as a whole in turn. I think the plot line is going to be pretty amazing. First of all, I think it's going to make for a very interesting show. And as for Obi-Wan, I'm really excited to see his overall development from, well, the negotiator that we saw in the Clone Wars to this broken Obi-Wan who's lost his faith, doesn't know what his path should be, and is now just watching over Luke and I guess leaving too, to this hopeful Obi-Wan, the Alec Guinness Obi-Wan in A New Hope, 
how are they going to make that seamless and how are they going to make him find his resolve again and find his hopefulness again in this show? Uh, you know, when he's going against all of these allies that have now turned on him, when he's going against the wrath of the Empire, and of course, when he's going against his brother, Anakin, now as Vader. And how is Vader going to react to seeing his old masters, to seeing the one that killed his wife in his mind? You know, he's in denial. He doesn't really understand what the hell is going on. He just is so angry that he's just lashing out at everybody at this point when he needs to realize that all of this, well, not all, but a lot of this really falls on his decision to trust the devil. Now, I'm not saying Anakin was in the wrong entirely, yeah, for what he did, for sure, but his resentment towards the Jedi was definitely justified. They weren't really listening to him, you know, like when his mother died, they were just like, whatever, and they just get over it, man. You know, when Padme was dying or had dreams of her dying, they're like, yeah, don't fear those who die. Don't mourn the loss, whatever. Let, let go. Like, what the hell is that? That's just not a way to deal with anything, especially for someone who was trained at the Jedi Temple after the age of nine and already had major attachments. And really, the Jedi are kind of the reason that Shmi is dead. Um, they never went back to kind of make sure she's okay and know that this is a huge thing for Anakin. This is, the, I mean, this is his mother. You know, it's, it's something for him that while he shouldn't be having attachments, it is what it is. And I need to understand that this could set this kid off in a path that is irreversible. And they didn't really realize that. They were just kind of sweeping it under the rug. No, a Jedi shouldn't have attachments. How can you not when you're literally with your mom for like nine years and you're a slave? And these are all things I think Kenobi should have seen and been a little bit more sensitive to. And this is why I believe Dave Filoni and so many fans like myself think that Qui-Gon Jinn would have been the perfect father figure for Anakin, which is really what he was missing. And I feel if Qui-Gon was alive, then a lot of this could have been avoided. And maybe we'll see a lot of Qui-Gon in this. Maybe we'll hear a lot of Qui-Gon in this. Perhaps Qui-Gon will even speak about Anakin, and that's something that he does in the novel as well. Uh, so there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to witness and watch and see really what is going to be happening in this show. Again, I'm extremely excited. I'm anticipating the show like no other. And I haven't been this excited for Star Wars since Revenge of the Sith back in 2005 when I was 15 years old. So hope you guys are ready with me. And uh, thanks for watching this video. And let me know what you guys think about Obi-Wan leaving the world. And sorry for my allergies. For a while, I've been sounding super congested and it's super annoying to just like sneezing like 50 times through this whole thing. Anyways, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.